Hi, everyone. Again, thanks for joining us today. We are here to talk about Giving Day strategy for Live PC, Give PC. We did have a webinar a few weeks uh, back on getting started with Live PC, Give PC. So if you do have uh, questions, you're looking more for some basic information about Live PC, Give PC, how to get your page set up, uh, et cetera, you can access that first getting started webinar, which is available on the nonprofit toolkit. <coughs> Excuse me. My name is Bethany. I am the director of the community team here at Mighty Cause. Uh, I've been working with the Park City Community Foundation for many years now, supporting uh, this event from our side. And we're also joined today by Christine Coleman from the Community Foundation. Uh, we'll be hearing from her um, over uh, the webinar with a couple of uh, key pieces of strategy tips that she'll be sharing with us. So uh, she'll be on later in the webinar and she'll also be available for questions at the end. Great. Hi, so everyone. Thanks, Christine, this, for this is Christine Coleman. Hi, everyone. So glad that you could make it today. Great. So a uh, brief agenda for what we're going to cover today. We're going to start with the Giving Day Basics. And as I mentioned, we did do an earlier webinar that really digs into the basics in much more uh, detail so that if you missed that webinar, you're new to Live PC, Give PC for your nonprofit, for example, I definitely recommend checking that out on the nonprofit toolkit. We will uh, do a quick refresher on some of the basics to start us off. Then we'll talk about the leaderboards and the prizes that are available as a part of Live PC, Give PC. And we'll spend most of our time today talking about campaign strategy. So what are the things that your nonprofit can really do to make the most of this really exciting opportunity? And then at the end, we will finish with a live Q&A session. So as we go throughout the presentation, feel free to type into that GoToWebinar control panel um, in that questions area, and we will take questions as we get to the end of the presentation. So again, to start, just some of the key basics, key reminders to be aware of. The very first step is to register your organization. It's a short form that you need to fill out. Hopefully most of you on today's webinar has, have already registered for this year. Uh, even if you've participated in the past, you do need to register every year. So if you have not yet registered for this year, you'll wanna go to livepcgivepc.org ASAP and fill out a short registration form. You'll be reviewed and approved, uh, hopefully, and then you will receive your an email granting you um, administrative access to your page on the platform, approval into the event. Uh, that deadline is coming up pretty shortly. So again, if you're not registered yet, make sure that you complete that registration form as soon as possible. Once you do register, you're um, participating in this year's event, you'll also be uh, given access, if you didn't already have it from the past, to your organization's dashboard on the platform. And this dashboard is really how you can navigate all the different uh, tools, uh, reports, et cetera, that you have access to on the platform. So we're gonna start here with just a brief overview of this dashboard. Um, the first page at the top of the dashboard, that's going to be your overview screen. You'll be able to catch up on key metrics there, see a to-do list if you haven't completed all of your items on our recommended to-do list, uh, and also stay tuned here for messages, um, information about the event as well. Uh, you'll see that on your overview screen. Uh, the fundraising tab on your dashboard, that's where you're going to access your profile page. And that's the page you'll be using to customize and share for Live PC Give PC. Um, it's also where you can access campaigns if you do have individual starting peer to peer fundraisers for you, um, where you can set up a matching grant, where you can customize your checkout. So, lots of really important stuff that you can access through that fundraising tab. The next item down is your reports. This is where you can access all your donation data, add an offline donation, access disbursements, reports, et cetera. Uh, and finally, the last item down on your dashboard is settings. This is where you can add a new administrator, remove an old administrator. So definitely a, a good practice 
uh, every year when you come back to LivePC GivePC, review the existing admins for your organization. If there's been turnover at your organization, if people have left, you can go ahead and clear them out, remove them as an admin. And you can also go ahead and add anybody else on your team that needs to have access to your page, whether they actually need to edit the page or just need access for the donation data, et cetera. Uh, you can add up to 10 people for your organization to be administrators. This is also where you can do things like update your legal address, your legal name, if any of that has changed uh, for your organization, and you can sign up for electronic funds transfer uh, if you haven't yet as your preferred disbursement method. So the profile I already mentioned can be accessed through the fundraising tab. Uh, this is really the, the main link that you'll be sharing with supporters, the main page that you'll be directing your donors to. So uh, important to really make this page tell a powerful story for you. We'll talk a little bit later in the webinar about what you can say in that story in particular. Um, but this is the place that you'll want to tell that story on the platform. So making uh, that page dynamic, both uh, with the copy that you add, as well as formatting images, videos, et cetera. Uh, you can do all of that to customize that profile page. Especially important for those organizations returning from uh, previous years participating in this event, of which there are many, um, you'll want to reset your metrics. So if you go to your profile page right now and you haven't already reset your metrics, um, you may see that you, you know, have $5,000 raised from 45 donors, if that's what you had during last year's campaign. You're welcome to leave that if you'd like, but most organizations prefer to sort of reset, start back at zero again each year so that as donors come to your page during the campaign, uh, they're seeing the progress from uh, this year's campaign specifically. So right from on your profile page in the editor, you have the option to decide what stats you want to show. Do you want to show the, the dollars raised or just the number of donors that have given or both? Um, do you want to include offline donations if you're adding those into this total here? And then finally, you'll have the option to decide uh, when to start counting these metrics from. So if you have uh, previous data in here, likely your calculation date is sometime in 2019, for example, you'll want to update that to September 6th, 2020, which is when early giving began for Live PC Give PC this year. Um, and then again, you'll make sure that your metrics on your page are showing this year's data in particular. And then you also have the option if you'd like to add a progress bar and a goal to the page. So if you're hoping to raise $10,000 in this year's campaign, for example, you can add that goal. And then as you make progress, receive donations during the campaign, that uh, thermometer or progress bar, if you will, will uh, be counting up, showing your progress in a nice visual way to supporters. After you have built and customized the profile page, uh, it's always important to preview the donation experience. Um, again, more information available in uh, the first webinar, uh, but we encourage you to both customize that donation experience, uh, choosing the data that you wanna collect from donors, entering custom donation levels uh, and sharing the impact that, for example, a $25 donation can have. And then once you customize this, previewing that experience so that you know exactly what that will look like for donors. Um, and you can also customize the post checkout experience. So what does the thank you page look like that donors see when they complete their gift? Uh, and adding custom messaging that will get included into the receipt that is sent to donors. Again, you're also able to preview what you customize on the post checkout experience as well. So all this is available under your fundraising tab on your dashboard. And the last kind of basic that we wanted to cover here is uh, more information about how to volunteer as a part of this year's campaign. So for this, I'm gonna turn it over to Christine. Thanks, Bethany. 
So this is Christine from the Community Foundation. And um, again, thanks to all of you who are on the call today. In our first webinar, um, I highlighted this, and I just want to highlight it again for everybody, that this day, our Giving Day, Live PC, Get PC, is really belongs to all of the nonprofits. And I'm hoping that you all will really capitalize on it in a big way this year um, because of COVID, because it's our 10th year. And one of the ways that we really raise awareness for Live PC, Get PC is through volunteer participation. Um, I know many of the nonprofits volunteer and have a specific street corner that they always um, try to get. And I encourage you to go on to livepcgpc.org as soon as you possibly can, go to the volunteer page and use the signups to sign up to um, have your street corner um, or have your inside donation station. This year, donation stations don't entail having tables or things like that because of COVID. Everything is going to be socially distanced and we've got cool live pc give pc masks to give to everybody but you should sign up for those spots soon um, we're also sending out regular emails to all of our nonprofit community um, about other ways to participate as nonprofits and one of those is going to be a parade so um, look for sign up opportunities to be part of the parade on november 6th we're also doing uh, for the first time neighborhood ambassadors and we're looking for one or two people in each of our park city neighborhoods to have the simple job of handing out yard signs putting up posters on, uh, wherever it might be appropriate in their neighborhood talking to their neighbors posting on next door and just do everything possible to raise awareness because um, we have a lot of newcomers in Park City and we want to make sure that people understand um, what it is and what they're supposed to do. Great. Thank you, Christine. So now we're going to jump into talk about some of the prizes that are available as a part of this year's campaign. So leaderboards are really uh, the primary source of prizes and uh, excitement to track along during the day on the livepcgivepc.org site. So there will be lots of leaderboards available on the website to track your progress. Uh, there'll be one leaderboard available for all nonprofits. So all participating nonprofits will be eligible for this leaderboard. And it's going to rank during the day based on the number of unique donors that uh, have given to your organization. So at the end of the day, the organization, the top three organizations with the most unique donors to their campaign uh, will be the winners for this leaderboard. Beyond the all nonprofits leaderboard, there are also a number of issue area leaderboards that uh, will be available as well. So based on the category that you selected in your uh, registration form, and you'll be placed into one of these category-based leaderboards um, that are available thanks to lots of uh, great sponsors that support Live PC Give PC. Again, here these will rank on the most unique donors to your campaign, and the top three organizations that win these leaderboards, um, or at the top of the leaderboard at the end of the day, will be the winners. And Bethany, this is Christine. I just want to weigh in quickly on the leaderboards and let everybody know that we've changed them a little bit this year. Um, we have added in um, an additional leaderboard this year and changed the names of the categories. So we have the all nonprofits leaderboard that Bethany mentioned, and then we have six others uh, focused on various issue areas. For example, there's one called arts and culture. There's one called education. There's a people and advocacy leaderboard. Um, there's one on environment and animals. So they've been split out a little bit differently this year, and we think it's actually a lot going to be a lot more clear for our donors. Great, thank you for that clarification. And again, that's something that your organization can follow along during the day on LivePCGivePC at livepcgivepc.org. You can see those leaderboards and your progress on those leaderboards. Uh, aside from the leaderboards, there are some other exciting ways to win during the day. There'll be a new donor challenge. So kicking off uh, right when the event begins, there will be a $10 uh, 
uh, kind of bonus, if you will, added to each donation uh, that comes in from a donor who is brand new to Live PC, Give PC. Uh, so lots of potential for new donors to help their causes that they're supporting earn extra uh, prize money this way. And then aside from the new donor challenge, there's also a Power Hour Booster Challenge. And so uh, during these hours, there will be two hours. Uh, they're not announced ahead of time. They'll be announced on the day to add even more excitement. So make sure you're paying attention. Um, all unique donors that give during these two power hours will have, uh, again, a $10 bonus added to their gift. Uh, and it's, it's uh, excuse me, I said all unique donors, it'll be the first 200 donors that give during those hours. So um, again, make sure you're staying tuned, following Live PC, Give PC on social media, staying up to date with what they've got going on as they will announce the hours on Live PC, Give PC that these Power Hour boosters are happening. And so now we're going to jump into really the primary focus of today's webinar, which is talking about campaign strategy, some tips that you can build into your strategy to be successful. Um, and there should be a range of, of information that we're sharing here. So hopefully those of you that have participated before and you've done Live PC, Give PC for 10 years now, uh, there should be some information for you, uh, as well as some of you that are brand new and trying to figure out where to start uh, in terms of putting your campaign together. So I'm going to let Christine actually kick us off with uh, a little bit of uh, information from her end. Thanks, Bethany. So marketing and communication and all the tactics that can go with it. Um, there's so many different things that you all can do to promote your involvement in Live PC, Good PC. Um, this is really a key fundraiser for many of our nonprofits in the community, whether you work with the arts, education, healthcare, environmental efforts, uh, whatever it might be. Um, like I said earlier, we are really hoping that you will make this your day. There's so many nonprofits that have had to cancel events and we wanna do everything we can do and go the extra mile this year to support you in your promotions. Um, our goal this year is to have 5,500 unique donors. So it's not a monetary goal, it's a participation goal. We really want to be inclusive and involve everybody. And as much as you're able to, I'm encouraging folks to reach out to our local media, um, to the Park Record, to KPCW, to PCTV, and tell your story. Um, tell the story of how um, your organization has been impacted by COVID. Tell the story of how you are um, having an impact on the, the people who you serve. And um, they're really, really gonna be excited about that. The local media, especially the park record has also had to have their own layoffs. And so they really appreciate if you can package a nice story and give it to them, they will certainly run it. And if you have any difficulty with um, getting uh, them to reply to you, feel free to reach out to me directly. And I've got you know great connections at all of those spots and can help you out. We're also really encouraging you to have more moving content videos. If you can create short, snappy, one minute or less videos to put on your social media platforms, those are just terrific, really attracts people's attention. And um, we'll talk a little bit more later about the live stream that we're going to be doing on November 6th, but um, would love it if you submit any videos that you have that already exist or that you create um, to the Community Foundation and we will help elevate that and get it on our live stream as well. Um, we're going to talk more about email marketing and social media in a second. Um, it definitely is something that you're going to want to be doing uh, on the day and leading up to November 6th. If you have any kind of advertising budget um, that you can put towards ads um, in our local print media, uh, PSAs with KPCW or ads and boost on Facebook or on Google, um, that is fantastic. 
And we also are really um, elevating the amount of uh, signage that we're putting out this year. Um, we want people to understand uh, when it's happening, that it's November 6th and what it is. And we'll have tons of car decals, yard signs and posters and postcards that we would like to share with you and encourage you to put them out as well because our small team of the Community Foundation only has so many arms and um, we'd like you to take those and um, get them out as well. You can even, for the car decals, you can have some made with your own logo on them next to the Live PC Give PC logo um, and give those to anybody who wants to put them on their car. So campaign messaging, um, I want to just highlight for everybody that, like I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of newcomers to Park City, um, not just because of the influx of people who have been coming because of COVID-19, um, but really even two years ago, apparently 10% of our population were new to Park City. And um, that's a lot. And one of the things that I heard, I've been with the Community Foundation for a year and a half now, but when I started last year, I definitely had a fair amount of people who didn't really understand um, what Live PC Give PC was or what they were supposed to do. And so I wanna highlight for you all to, in your messaging, in your email communications, on your social posts, um, to make sure that you're explaining what Live PC Give PC is, that it is our local giving day that is, um, has an impact on everybody who lives here and works here and stays here and plays here. And that what we want them to do is, is give and spread the word about giving to all of their friends and families so that we can get over 5,500 donors. Um, this is our 10th year, so hype it up. There's many nonprofits who have been participating for the full 10 years. I think we have a great opportunity to tell stories about why that matters. What has 10 years of Live PC, Give PC done for your organization? Um, again, if you can highlight how you have been impacted by COVID-19, uh, what's different this year for your organization? And uh, say, you know, for example, in a regular year, you might have had a certain need, and this year it has grown X percent because of COVID. Bethany, I think we can move on. Great. Thank you for sharing all of that. Uh, as I mentioned, she might be chiming in. Uh, a little bit more as we continue to talk about campaign strategy. Um, but to cover some of the other things, she already mentioned, of course, social media and email are key pieces of your Live PC, Give PC strategy. So uh, just to cover some of the basics to keep in mind when planning your email strategy. Always encourage organizations to put together a short, sweet, and simple message. Um, there is so much that goes into your programming and why you do the work that you do and why you do it the way you do it and the impact that you've had. There's so much information that you could potentially share with donors. And I know sometimes it's tempting to share all of that information with donors, but I think that donors can easily get overwhelmed with too much text. They don't read it all. So try to condense that into a really simple, clear message to them. And as Christine already mentioned, stories are really often what, what a donor can connect with. So um, thinking about how you can weave stories into your messaging is always important. Um, but keeping that message simple, keeping your emails simple and consistent throughout so that the story that you're telling, what you're asking for, um, at, in the example that Christine was just giving uh, your, your COVID um, considerations, what's changed for you there. Keep that consistent so that donors are kind of being reinforced about what you do and what you need so that when they go to make their gift, uh, they really know what impact they're able to have. Uh, segmentation is always something that we encourage nonprofits to think about as well. Uh, it can be overwhelming if you're a small nonprofit thinking you have to have 17 different versions of an email and that's not really what segmentation is all about. It's just taking the time to think through a couple of your key audiences and what's the best way to communicate with them. 
So one audience that we'll talk more about a little bit later is donors that gave last year on LibPC GivePC. That's a very special group of donors that you likely will want to communicate with a little bit differently than the rest of your donor database. They've already made a gift to your organization during this event, so they understand the event they've given before. How can you build on that to get them to do more this year? Other audiences will be maybe people that have already given to you this year. If you had a spring campaign um, in response to COVID, if you had to change an event that you usually have and some of your donors may have given earlier this year than they had in the past, does it mean that you can't talk to them about Live PC, Give PC this year, but you'll want to be thoughtful about how you communicate with them, recognizing the support they've already given you. So identify a few key audiences, and then you can slightly change your email messaging so that you're speaking to your donors uh, in a way that really acknowledges their uh, involvement with your organization. Uh, starting now, uh, you can schedule out some of your emails in advance. So of course, there'll be lots of activity happening on November 6th, but you don't have to wait until that day to send your emails. You can send a save the date in advance. Um, giving is open as of now, so uh, you can start to secure some early donations now. And while you don't wanna hit the donate now call to action too hard for too long and remove some of the urgency that comes with November 6th, you can start um, including that in your messaging to allow donors to give early. Uh, always test your emails um, on mobile in particular, the donation platform and your profile page will look great and be a seamless experience on mobile, but they'll often start from your email. So make sure that your emails are really uh, easy and mobile friendly uh, to, to read and then to click on the you know main donate CTA button, for example. Uh, and if you have the opportunity, try some A-B testing, especially in advance of the event. Play around with a couple different things. What time of day you send, when do you send, trying different subject lines, and learn from all of that so that as you get closer to the campaign and on the day of, your emails can have the, the highest response and engagement possible. As for social media strategy, uh, there's so many platforms out there. You don't have to post on every single platform. Um, figure out where your audience really is, um, where your audience engages most with you. And if that's Facebook, then you can really focus your efforts there. If that's Instagram, focus your efforts there. You can schedule content ahead of time, uh, just like we were talking about with email. Get it scheduled ahead of time, and then on the giving day itself, that leaves you room to be more reactive and responsive. If you have donors commenting on any of your posts, you can comment back, you can have a conversation with them. If you have a matching grant, for example, you can add an update based on your progress towards that match. Um, you can you know, add a responsive post based on when you hear the Power Hour Booster challenges are available. So having some, some content scheduled ahead of time leaves you a little bit more space that you can be, you can be responsive to what's going on. Um, Christine already mentioned advertising budget, um, of course, with social media. If you do have the space for some boosted posts, that can be a great way to increase your reach. Um, but a great way to increase your reach and engagement uh, without paying for boosted posts is just to have really engaging content. So um, that's photos, videos, that's what's going to stop somebody when they're scrolling on their phone uh, to see um, what it is that you've posted about. And again, stories, that's really, that's really what gets donors attention. Yeah. And Bethany, I just want to pipe in here and say, I, I really encourage, um, I think we have all levels of sophistication with our nonprofit community with social media. And I really encourage all of you to make sure you are putting a little bit of money behind each of your posts through a boost. It doesn't have to be significant. Even $5 can make a difference. I think uh, Facebook has become very much pay for play. And while you can still get some people are attracted to your post and engaging with them organically, it's a lot harder. And if you've never boosted a post before, 
don't be shy, reach out to me. I can connect you with um, the person who we have helping us with social media and they can give you a quick 15 minute training on how to do that if you've never done it before. Also, the Community Foundation for the first time is, um, we are putting uh, more effort behind our digital advertising strategy than we ever have before. And we're focusing it primarily on Live PC, Give PC in the coming months. So you will see ads out there for Live PC, Give PC that are sponsored by the Community Foundation. And we will be doing several of them focused around our leaderboards, our different issue areas and we will highlight um, some nonprofit organizations as well. So that will be an added benefit um, for everybody this year. Great. Thanks for sharing that. And uh, now we're gonna kind of circle back to uh, live streaming, which we've mentioned uh, briefly before. Um, so I'll start with a little bit of, about how you can incorporate live streaming into your strategy. And then Christine will add a little bit about what uh, the Community Foundation is going to be doing with live streaming for this year's event as a whole. Um, so just like videos are engaging for donors, live streaming, live video is even more engaging. Um, and in this year in particular, lots of in-person events have had to be canceled. Maybe in the past you've done an in-person event as a part of your Live PC Give PC strategy. Um, and, and people are looking for different ways to replace that engagement. You still want to connect with your donors, you still want to bring people together, but it just may not look exactly like it's done in the past. And so uh, live streaming is a really great opportunity to take advantage of that. And it's something that more and more nonprofits are trying, especially as a part of a giving day campaign. You don't have to be uh, super sophisticated uh, to, to figure it out. Facebook and Instagram have tools that you can um, you can use. You don't need to you know buy a microphone and a camera and all this great stuff. Um, Facebook and Instagram do make it pretty easy to get started. Of course, there's always ways to step up the game there and, and do more, but definitely encourage you to to try it. Um, it live streaming can be a nice way. Uh, to add to your content that doesn't necessarily even require as much uh, prep or editing time as even producing a video, though both are really great strategies to engage donors. And um, just to share a couple of content ideas, if you're maybe not sure where to start, what would you even talk about on a live stream during the day? You can do interviews interview with your executive director, interview with a board member, interview with somebody that's served by your programming, an alumni of your programming, depending of course on what you do, uh, Q and A sessions about your work, um, behind the scenes, if you know, depending again on what you do and how you do it, you might give people a tour of a facility, for example, spotlight on a donor or a volunteer that's been a big part of your organization over the years. Again, all of this is just chances to connect more with the donors and, and add more interesting content um, to, to help them understand really why they should be paying attention to your organization on Live PC, Give PC, and then why they should make a donation. And so, Christine, I'll let you share a little bit more about uh, the Community Foundation's plans to incorporate live streaming as a part of this year's event. Sure. So as part of pivoting away from doing, uh, you know, in-person events that are large and having our big party at High West Distillery, we are doing the parade that I mentioned earlier. We um, are having some very small house parties from um, maybe some of our board members and committee members who want to have their family over folks who they can uh, socially distance with and have them over to do watch parties um, to our third thing that we're doing that's different is a live stream. Uh, right now we're planning on doing a live stream from four o'clock to eight o'clock on November 6th. Uh, we will definitely be thrilled to include any content about your organization that you might wanna provide to us in the form of very short pre-recorded videos. Um, if you're able to do uh, videos or if you already have them and they're longer than a minute, we'll totally consider that. Uh, we want to have fun, scrappy videos. They don't have to be 
super polished. If they are, that's great. But um, if we have uh, fun videos that aren't just talking heads, it's great to interview your executive director, definitely do it. But it would be nice to get um, some silly fun ones as well. And it kind of goes in the spirit and the tone of live PC, give PC. Um, so please consider uh, submitting videos to us. And uh, yeah, we're really excited about this. I think we're gonna be uh, partnering with PCTV to help us pull all of this off. Our live stream will be on Facebook, on our Facebook page, which is the Park City Community Foundation Facebook page. And also when anybody goes to livepcgivepc.org, it will be right there on the homepage. Yeah, so having that live stream right there on the homepage of the event site means that people can watch the live stream and make donations all, you know, in the same place. So uh, hopefully that is uh, a nice, a nice offshoot of this new way to engage this year. So moving on with a, a couple other strategy uh, things to keep in mind, uh, of course, the toolkit resources. So we've talked mostly so far uh, about uh, communication strategy, email, social media, et cetera. The toolkit in particular has tons of templates available for you. Uh, so beyond the, the recording of today's training and the last training, um, there are templates available for newsletters, email blast, um, uh, email templates, social media guides. So uh, make sure you take advantage of that toolkit. Uh, you don't have to start from scratch on everything, uh, but take advantage of the resources there for you and then customize those templates, the suggested copy to your organization and what you're raising funds for this year. So moving into kind of some other approaches to campaign strategy, uh, I mentioned already that early donations are open for this year's event. And while you don't want to dilute the excitement that comes on November 6th, uh, it, there is definitely a strategy towards building some momentum in the lead up to the event and perhaps getting a couple of donors to help break the ice with some seed donations so that when your first email lands on November 6th, for example, donors aren't visiting a page that has zero dollars raised, but you've got some activity going and they want to be a part of that. They want to help you keep going, keep, keep building that momentum to reach the goals that you have. So perhaps think about a short list of people that you might be able to identify for some of these seed donations. And whether these donations are, you know, in advance of the event or early on, you know, right when the event starts on November 6th, that all still counts. Uh, board members, maybe high level staff, engaged, committed volunteers, uh, people that are really kind of in, in the inner circle of your nonprofit that you know might be open to this kind of uh, support. Uh, kind of as you're developing that list of people, you may have some crossover between those that might be willing to make an early gift and those that might be willing to make a matching gift for your campaign. Um, they won't be the exact same list. Uh, of course, matching donors, you might have some other potential uh, prospects to consider. Um, maybe a major donor that gives every year at the end of the year, for example, uh, corporate sponsors, local businesses. Think about who might be able to help uh, provide a match for your campaign this year. Um, of course, Live PC, Give PC has lots of exciting things that make it a fun uh, and impactful day for giving, leaderboards, prizes, and all that the Community Foundation is doing. And securing a matching grant is really kind of a way to add an, an extra layer of that incentive, that excitement, that urgency, so that your donors know their donation is going to have an even bigger impact because you've secured a match. So, we always encourage nonprofits to kind of think of this cycle as you're prospecting who are really the individuals, groups, businesses that might be a good fit to secure a match and take the time to get to know them, learn about their interests and goals because of course a corporate partner may have a very different uh, goal in making a matching grant than a major donor might. Uh, some may want recognition and brand 
uh, awareness for that match. Some may not want recognition at all. So taking the time to learn about the matching donor and what interests them, what appeals to them, allows you to then craft your ask to really respond to what you think uh, will meet their needs. And there are lots of flexible options on the platform in terms of how you uh, structure that match. Uh, dollars, you know, dollar for dollar, donor-based matches. Um, and you can even combine a number of smaller matching grants uh, to, uh, to make one larger match or have multiple matches available throughout the day. So um, you shouldn't be intimidated because you don't have one $10,000 matching donor, for example. Uh, you can make smaller chunks of matching grants still impactful depending on how you package them uh, and promote them during the day. And so once you do secure this match, uh, promoting that matching grant as a part of your campaign uh, is critical. So you have the option on your Live PC Give PC profile page to post a matching grant. Um, when you post this match, you have the option if you'd like to recognize the donor uh, with a, a logo, uh, image, uh, or just adding their name. Uh, this, this match will then count down live on your page so that as the event is going on, donors and visitors to the page will see how much is left in this match, encourage them to make their gift with urgency so that they can be eligible for this match. And then whatever you do to build out on your page, you have the ability to, again, share that message in the other channels that you're using. So. Uh, social media is a great place to provide updates on your matching grants. Uh, if you, you know, have $250 left in your match, that's a great update to share on social media. Um, and you'll want to make sure that in the emails that you are sending throughout the campaign, donors know that there's a match available on the uh, table. And even, you know, you can do things like updating the call to action button in your email instead of just saying donate now you can say double my gift or something that reinforces right into that call to action button that they have that potential for uh, further impact. Hey, Bethany, this is Christine. I just have a quick question since we're on matches right now. Sure. How does it work in Mighty Cause if you have say more than one match? Is there a way that it can appear that says your match just isn't doubled, it's say tripled? Yeah, absolutely. So. When you are building out your match on the platform, you have lots of flexibility in terms of how you want to do it. So if you have two distinct matches, you can set them up as two distinct matches. And when a donor comes to your page, they will see that there are two different matching opportunities available that they can, you know, that their donation counts against. Or you can combine them into one match and if you had two donors that gave, you know, $5,000, for example, you can either have one $10,000 match or a 200% match up to $5,000, for example. So you really have the option, depending on what your nonprofit is interested in encouraging um, and depending on what your uh, matching donors might be interested in. But, um, you know, most most nonprofits do a one to simple one to one match, you know, 100% gift. But I've seen some great success with, you know, a 200% match or a triple match or something like that because it looks a little different. It looks a little more exciting to donors. So you do have the option if you'd like to combine to actually display it as a triple match or a double match, uh, or you can set them up side by side, uh, or you also have the option to stack them if you will, sequence them so that when your first matching grant ends, your next matching grant kicks in and it is available then from that point until that next match ends. So uh, lots of different options there. Um, there's lots of flexibility within the tool. That means there's a lot to think about when you're building your match. So there is um, a support article on support.mightycause.com that walks through the matching grant tool and what you can do with matches. Um, but you're also welcome to reach out to us at support at mightycause.com to explain what you're trying to do with your match. And we're happy to help provide suggestions for the best way to set that up on the platform so that 
you really get the most out of it in terms of getting your donors, visitors to the page excited about this opportunity that you have secured. All right, so moving beyond matching grants, um, we're gonna talk a little bit about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So uh, we, we often call your peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers ambassadors, and ambassadors really can be a larger term. It can just mean somebody spreading the word for your cause, sharing a post on social media, emailing your donation page to a couple of their friends and family. Um, all of those types of ambassadors are important and impactful, um, but we're, what we're gonna focus primarily on today is how to activate ambassadors that are willing to start peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers on behalf of your organization. And it's something that um, lots of nonprofits still haven't really taken advantage of. Uh, for whatever reason, maybe it feels daunting, you don't wanna ask too much of your supporters, um, but it, there's really so many benefits if you consider this strategy. Um, first and foremost, uh, you have the opportunity to reach new donors. Your donor database is the current list that it is, and you only can reach out to the people that you have contact information for. But if you identify individuals within that list that might be a fundraiser for you, you are now getting access to their whole list of supporters, their whole list of donors, people in their network that they might be able to bring on. So that's likely brand new donors to your organization, which is great for all kinds of reasons because it's new donors to your organization, it's more donors to move you up on the leaderboard, uh, it's new donors that are uh, potentially going to benefit your organization with the new donor challenge available. So lots of benefits just from the fact that they're bringing new people into the fold. Of course, with those new donors comes more funding. You're, you're amplifying your outreach, you're reaching out to more people, more people are helping you reach out, which means more donors, more dollars coming in. And it's a really nice way to share personal stories. So we've talked a little bit a few times about how stories are really what can be compelling to donors to get donors excited to make their gift. And by activating a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser, they have the chance on their donation page to tell their story about why do they, why are they fundraising for your organization? Why have they maybe volunteered for your organization for five years? Why are they on the board? What, what is the connection to the impact, the work that your organization does in the community that has drawn them in? And that then personal story, of course, appeals to their network, but it also kind of helps you build up your bank of uh, these unique personal stories of the impact of your organization. One of the best ways to really take advantage of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising on a giving day like Live PC Give PC is by using the team fundraising tools available on Mighty Cause. So with team fundraising, you basically create create a mini competition. You bring a group of people together to fundraise for your organization. And by bringing a group of people together, it can make it feel a little bit easier, a little bit less daunting for people that maybe haven't fundraised before uh, because they're part of a group of people doing it. They um, can be a part of a, a team, if you will, uh, whether, whether it's encouraging competition against each other with the friendly leaderboard that's available on the page or looking at, it, looking at it as an opportunity to showcase the aggregate impact that all of these individuals can have uh, when fundraising together. So this example here is a great example for a giving day where you get all of your board members to start their own uh, fundraising page for your organization. And then you have a team page which showcases the impact that the entire board has had together. You can create a template page that makes it really easy for these people when they're getting onboarded. Uh, they can use all of your pre-populated fields on the page and basically just click publish and start sharing their page. They can customize it if they'd like, uh, but it's uh, for those people that don't want to spend the time, uh, it's really quick and easy to get up and running. And then you have tools right through this team fundraising product that allows you to communicate with these uh, fundraisers to keep them going, send them tips, 
Um, maybe send them some email copy that they can share. Keep them updated on, on your goals for uh, the day and your progress towards that goal, matches, whatever. Keeping these fundraisers kind of as a part of your inner circle, you bring them into uh, into the fold and get them just as excited about your internal staff, for example, about reaching your organization's goals for the campaign. And uh, you can manage all of this from your dashboard uh, in your campaigns screen available under fundraising. You can access your key stats. You can get the contact information for any of these peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. You can contact them through here. Um, this is also where you can start a new fundraiser. Um, and uh, new this year that was not available last year, you can also create a fundraiser template, even if you're not doing a team fundraiser. So uh, team fundraising is a great way to uh, bring people together and it gives you this additional page where you can showcase the impact of a group of people fundraising. But if you don't know how many people you have, you're not interested in creating that team page, you still do have the opportunity to create a fundraiser template. So that can be your Live PC, Give PC fundraiser. And then anybody who is starting a fundraiser for your organization this year can, again, take advantage of that template that you've created and streamline their onboarding process. So I mentioned a little bit earlier uh, the importance of uh, thinking of last year's donors as a very special segment to keep in mind and uh, develop special plans for. And so one of the ways that uh, the platform can help you do that is through um, donor retention tools that we have available. And um, of course, you know, I think we all know donor retention is never as high as you want it to be. Uh, while uh, it actually costs less to retain a donor than to acquire a new one, um, they should be easier to uh, to get back on board. But oftentimes, nonprofits gloss over this strategy and focus primarily on new donor acquisition, and it really is a missed opportunity. And so, again, encourage you to think about what can you do to focus on donor retention this year in particular? How can you create a special strategy for these donors uh, to encourage them to come back and give again so that you retain them? Uh, but maybe there's ways that you can look at helping to increase their support in some way, whether it's, you know, they made a $25 donation last year and this year you want to encourage them to make a $30 donation or a $75 donation last year to a $100 donation. They made a large gift last year. Maybe they can give a matching gift this year uh, or, you know, they've given every year. Maybe this year they're a candidate for peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser. Um, there's lots of kind of different ways you can look at it, but how can you help um, connect with those people that have given prime before uh, and encourage them to continue growing their involvement with your organization. So on the platform, uh, all nonprofits have access to a donor retention report. You can go into this report, again, available on the report section of your dashboard where you'll find your uh, donations report. You can filter to see your Live PC, Give PC uh, 2019 donors. You can see who has and has not been retained for this year's campaign. So you can easily track uh, at a quick glance without having to do the math. Uh, you can easily track during the day how you're doing on that retention. So you can set a goal of what percentage of donors you'd like to retain from last year, and then you can easily track that. And then based on that progress that you're seeing, you can respond as needed. You can either download a list of all of your unretained donors from the platform and send an email, uh, like a blast email, or you can send individual emails, whether through the platform or through uh, your own external program. If you have large donors, for example, that are unretained, uh, you might decide that they're worth uh, that personal touch, whether it's an individual email or a phone call, for example. But again, paying attention to that retention metric during the day uh, will help make you focus on this goal uh, and hopefully improve that retention and in improve your overall results for the day. Um, our, our last item to cover here is, of course, the Giving Day um, 
doesn't end on November 6th. Um, the, the strategy that you should be employing should really continue beyond that. There's lots of great thank you tools built into the platform, um, but you'll want to build on that, um, find out, you know, determine ahead of time what tier of donor deserves uh, additional follow-up, personal follow-up, whatever it might be. Circle back after this year's event um, and really help donors understand the impact that you were able to have on your community uh, with the funds that you raised, especially if you talked uh, differently about your needs this year with COVID-19, you'll want to circle back and help the donors understand what they helped you to accomplish, what good they helped to do in the community. Um, and that's going to help build up that relationship long term, keep them coming back, keep them supporting your organization in the future. And with that, we have just about three minutes left, um, but I will go ahead and see if we have any questions that have come in. If you do have questions, feel free to type them in uh, to the control panel now. Um, great. One question that we have is for you, Christine. Uh, did you say that you're hoping for the submitted videos to be about a minute long? And I believe this is in reference to the live stream. Yes, about a minute long. If you go over a little bit, that's okay. Um, we're probably not going to be able to take something that's you know, eight minutes, but depending on the quality of the video and what you've got, we will be flexible. And if you can do videos that are a minute or shorter, even 30 seconds, that's going to be beneficial for you on social media as well, because more people will see it. Great. Thank you. And as of right now, that's the only question that we've had come in. So um, while I'm waiting to see if any other last minute questions come in, just a reminder, you can always email support at mightycause.com if you have technical questions, whether it's about your matching grant or setting up a team fundraising page, uh, feel free to reach out to support. We're happy to assist. And there's also tons of support resources available at support.mightycause.com, more of a self-help forum where we've got lots of articles, how-to videos that will walk you through lots of the features on the platform. So you're always welcome to start there and hopefully you can find what you need. And if not, again, feel free to reach out to our support team. And um, I think that's it. So we'll let everyone get back to their day. Again, this webinar will be available on the nonprofit toolkit later today. Uh, so thanks so much for your time and attention today and uh, good luck with this year's Live PC Get PC campaign. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Christine.